Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of VHS Studios. We are planning to do a low light test and stabilization test today with few similar devices in the market with almost similar size and specs. For this test, we have selected the iPhone 15 Pro Max, DJI Osmo Pocket 3, Sony CV1 and GoPro Hero 11. If you're looking for a device or trying to buy a device that can perform well in low light with good stabilization, try to watch this video completely. The points and comparisons that we are covering in this video may help you to make a quick and easy decision on your next purchase. If you have already decided to buy any of the selected devices in the video or planning to buy any of these devices, try to watch this video completely as it will help you to decide on which one you should buy. For this test today, we have set the resolution of all the devices to 4K 24p. All the other video settings are in auto mode. The reason why we have decided to do this is because we wanted to show you the default result of Pocket 3 footage in its easiest mode without making any advanced configuration. Keep in mind that if we configure all these devices to their optimal settings, the results may differ from what we are going to see today. We will not be doing any post-processing sessions either on this footage that you are going to see and it will be the original footage that we will be copying from the respective devices. Here you can see the Pocket 3 device on the left side and an iPhone 15 Pro Max on the right side. We are going to take a short walk here and shoot both these devices together. All these devices are mounted to the same tripod as mentioned earlier for the test. I would like to stop here for a moment. As you can see in the footage, the iPhone 15 Pro Max is showing a lens flare throughout this recording. We have seen similar flares coming in previous iPhone models as well, especially when you are shooting in low light or night modes. On the Pocket 3 also, you could see a lens flare at the top left corner near to the light source. In fact, the flares look more visible when we are closer to the light source. You should know that the Pocket 3 footage comes with a wider field of view which is equivalent to 20mm on a full frame camera. Therefore, the subjects at each corner looks more flat due to the distortion. If you are enjoying this video so far, kindly consider liking this video and subscribing to the channel. Thank you. The Pocket 3 shows a smooth video footage as you can see in the video along with a good dynamic range. The iPhone 15 Pro Max also shows very similar footage. However, the dynamic range and stabilization seems better on the Pocket 3 footage. Here we are doing a test with Sony CV1. As you can see, the Sony CV1 shows a brighter footage compared to the Pocket 3 device. We can also see any stabilization on the Sony CV1 footage. The dynamic range also looks less on the Sony CV1 footage. Both these devices are equipped with a 1 inch type sensor. But the Pocket 3 is obviously a newer device and comes with the 10 bit recording capability. The resolution is also less on Pocket 3. Pocket 3 comes with a 9.4 megapixel sensor while the Sony CV1 comes with a 20 megapixel sensor. The lower megapixel of Pocket 3 definitely helps Pocket 3 to produce a better footage in low light conditions. We are not doing an in-depth technical review of any of these devices that we are testing today. However, we intend to demonstrate how these devices can perform when it is attached to a single handheld tripod and shot side by side. We are planning to walk around and move towards more low light areas. All the devices will be getting the same impact since it is mounted to the same tripod and we intend to shoot this footage and show it to you as it is. Here 
here we have the GoPro Hero 11 that shows much darker footage compared to the Poké 3. The impact of digital image stabilization is very much visible in the GoPro footage. We could also see a high amount of flickering in the GoPro footage. The performance of GoPro varies in low light situations and lit situations. In fact, we could easily see the connection between digital image stabilization and light in these frames. The DJI Osmo Pocket 3 also comes with a dedicated low light mode. In this mode, the ISO will vary from ISO 50 to ISO 16000. Now we are going to change the Pocket 3 to the low light mode for further testing. We can immediately see the difference in the dynamic range of Pocket 3 footage. The clouds are more visible in the Pocket 3 footage and we don't see them in the iPhone 15 Pro Max at all. Now we have changed the Sony CV-1 to active mode. This is the best stabilization mode in Sony CV-1 device. Because of the additional stabilization, you could see that the field of view also changed and we could see a more crop in the Sony footage. We could see the Sony CV-1 is producing a better stabilized footage now compared to the earlier one. However, the footage is still not anywhere closer to the Pocket 3 device.
The footage quality of GoPro 11 is very similar to the footage that we shot earlier. It's very similar, it's much darker and we don't see much improvements in the stabilization either. Of these four devices, DJI Osmo Pocket 3 is a clear winner under low light situations. There is no comparison when it comes to dynamic range, low light footage quality or stabilization. The lens flare issue and distortion have seen as one of the drawback of Pocket 3. As mentioned earlier, we have mostly used auto settings for this test and not an advanced setting or optimal setting for all these devices. You also have an option of post-processing this footage for better smoothing and stabilization as well. However, the original footage of Pocket 3 shows great potential and can be the winner again as the footage looks more appealing. If you're still planning for a device that can help you take footage in daylight and low light situations, we hope this video helped give you some good information. We can't say that Pocket 3 is a better device only because of the low light performance or stabilization. There are many other factors when it comes to deciding the quality of the footage. We'll be doing such many tests in the upcoming videos. We hope you liked this video and we will see you again in the next one. Thank you.